Welcome to Motivation for Success. Hope and you enjoy this video. All of us have experienced some tragedy, and if we haven't, we will. And you can either let it destroy your life, or you can build upon it. You can permit it to let you let it hold you down, or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how much you work on yourself. There are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, just like sports. Some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, "You know, I just didn't hit a basket today"? No. They continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you. After you have evaluated yourself in the situation, continue to move. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Find. Somebody that you can help, so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Sometimes you have to just back up and go within yourself. A bow and arrow. You you can't take a bow and just push it out an arrow. You just can't push the arrow out. You have to pull it back and then release it. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you are under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a god. You know, I loved reading the book called "As a Man Thinketh" by James Allen. He uses the analogy of the mind being like a garden. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. Am I right? But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Happiness is activity with purpose. It's love in practice. Happiness is both a grasp of the obvious as well as an awe of the mysterious. But for most people around us, happiness seems to be either something left behind or something yet to be discovered. Like all the good things in life, happiness is elusive by nature, but not impossible to capture. A major key for bringing joy into our lives lies in the next word we shall briefly examine: discipline. If there is a magic word that stands out above all the rest, this is the one: discipline. And in this program, you'll discover how positive this word is. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment, the bridge between inspiration and value achievement, the bridge between necessity and productivity. Remember, all good things are upstream. The passing of time takes us adrifting, and drifting only brings us the negative, the disastrous, the disappointment, and the failure. Failure is not a cataclysmic event. It is not generally the result of one major incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. Failing in life is failing to think today, failing to act today, failing. To care, to strive, to climb, to learn, to keep trying day by day. If your goal requires that you write ten letters today and you write only three, you are down seven letters. If you want to make five calls and you only make one, you are down four on calls. If your plan calls for saving ten dollars today and you save none, you're down ten dollars today. Now the danger is looking at an undisciplined day and concluding that no great harm has been done. It doesn't seem like such a bad day, but add up these days. To make a year, and then add up those years to make a lifetime, and perhaps you can now see how repeating today's small failures can easily turn your life into a major disaster. Success, on the other hand, is just the same process in reverse. If you plan to make ten calls and you end the day making fifteen, now you're up five calls. If you then get up a few on letters, move up the savings numbers, you can see what a massive difference it could make in a year, and what wealth and accomplishment awaits for a lifetime. Is that a beautiful home or what? That's my home in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Ryan Stuman's been there. I think most people that visit it, I've had uh, some of the wealthiest people in the world visit that house. Some of the most famous people in the world. Guy playing in the Super Bowl next week visited that house. That balcony right there is where Tony Robbins told me I'm an effing loser. Um, this is one of four homes. I'm only at this. By the way, this property is 2,000 feet of lake frontage. Um, 
I've got three or four boats out there, sea dews the whole thing. That's the guest cabin. The roof is all copper. Not to brag about the house. I'm not going to get into all the details of the house. But every room's a piece of art. It took four years to build. And those shingles on there are handmade copper shingles, individual shingles. It's one of the most, my windows are made of copper. It's sort of a bizarre bananas property, right? Most people that have been there say it's the most beautiful home they've ever been to. It's something I'm very proud of, uh, especially as a young guy to have that house. I'm there just, you know, I don't know, 45, 60 days a year. It's a dream of mine. Every morning we get up, I boat to my golf course. We boat to dinner. I don't even ever drive. I have a Raptor up there. I don't even ever drive my truck up there. It's a dream. I pictured that place for years. I pictured that place for years. We live in Laguna Beach on the ocean front. I met my wife. We grew up in Pomona. Any of you from Southern California? Pomona is not um, Laguna Beach. And we would take little trips down there when we were young. And I'd, I'd walk around the beach and we were like 15, 16. Same beach. My daughter jammed a shovel in her face the other day. And about the same age. And I said, baby, we're going to live here someday. Someday I'm going to make all this happen. Someday our dream's going to come true. It was a dream in my mind. And then I went up and played golf in Coeur d'Alene one time with John Elway. And I'm like, that's where I'm going to live. But I couldn't afford the house. So listen, I'm about to tell you. I couldn't afford this. Everybody thought I was crazy. I would drive my boat and dream about this property. All it was was a hill. See all those rocks right there? I'm gonna make a point to you in a minute. I kept driving by. All there was was that cabin you saw before. Okay, it's, it's a spectacular home. And I kept wanting to buy the house, wanting to buy the house, wanting to buy the property rather. And I couldn't afford it and the guy wouldn't sell it to him. But I kept coming after him, coming after him, coming after him. You will have real estate deals like this. I kept pursuing it and pursuing it and pursuing it. And finally, I caught the guy in the middle of a divorce. And he goes, all right, you can buy it. It's X amount of money. I went, I don't have that much money. But I'll give you my Rolls Royce, my boat, my other house and this amount of cash and he took it my family's like you're crazy that's way too much money for the property you can't afford it listen to me it's gonna sound like your life what was wrong with the other house what was wrong with where you were it was nice when's enough enough for you my gosh you had a nice house you had a nice life why are you trying to buy real estate why are you getting why, hey, going to one of these stupid seminars where they're scamming you or you, know, you can't afford that crap just google it days away spending money writing notes down you're never gonna use what's wrong with your life now well that's what they kept telling me I said no nah, I got a vision I know what I want there it's gonna be spectacular it's gonna be one of the greatest homes in the country it's like yeah you can't afford afford it dummy I'm like well I want it we started to build the house I started to want to build the house I brought the architect out I brought the contractor out and the contractor goes you, you aren't really like putting putting a house here are you and I'm like well yeah because you can't build a house here there's streams running through this whole house there's running springs anything we build water's gonna spray up all over the damn place and by the way the whole hill is bedrock you can't build a house here that's why there wasn't a house here you think no one else had the same idea you had you think nobody else thought that would be a cool thing to do you're the only one who found it your family's gonna say that you think you're the only one trying to buy real estate you think the only one with that idea everyone's buying real estate Everyone's buying apartments. Everyone's flipping. Just watch Bravo TV or A&E. Everyone's doing it. You think that's so brilliant? I'm like, wait a minute. Are you serious? My heart was racing. He goes, you, you can't build a house here. And my, archi my, my architect's like, well, you could, but like, you'd have to like jackhammer the whole property. I'm like, oh, okay. And my family's like, I told you, you're out of your mind. That's when...
do good on your first deal. I told you, I told you, I told you. And I said, well, what's this jackhammer cost? He's like, about 300 bucks for 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, how many minutes are we talking about? I don't know. Three months later, the architect comes to me and goes, we got a problem. There's springs all over this place. The jackhammer's not getting done. You're just bleeding money. I already overpaid for the property. Now I'm, I can't even get a foundation poured on this thing because of all the dadgum rocks everywhere. I go out there one day, it's raining. He goes, it's raining. There's water everywhere. It's flooded. It looks like Beirut. Like literally there's rocks everywhere. I'm like, and I was literally crying. I'm like, what am I going to say to my wife? They were all right. I've lost my damn mind. Look at this. I made a mess. I've spent all the money I have. So I went backwards, not forwards. This happens as an entrepreneur, like way backwards. And then I'm sitting there going, shit, what did I get? I don't even know what I'm doing. Like I was okay before. What is wrong with me? When's enough enough? Crap. My architect goes, well, we could like dynamite the hill. I'm like, dude, you're the same guy I said we jackhammer the place. He's like, look, Ed, I, you know, I, I'm not even so sure the Lake Association, the city's not going to come by. I'll tell you, this is like an eyesore. You're going to have to haul all these rocks off of here, dude. That's another probably six, 700 grand to get these rocks out of here. I'm talking about two thousand feet of frontage this property is a hundred acres guys you got to dynamite it and you'd have to get all your neighbors approval i finally do that give us approval and we literally dynamite my life dynamite my property and then the architect quit and then the contractor quit and my life was a mess i was out of money i was broke and this is after i was already a relatively successful guy in some people's eyes my wife's like i told you i told you i told you my dad's like man i told you when is enough enough eddie like not everything you touch turns to gold not all this dreaming seminar stuff you go to works finally I got another architect out there and he's like hey I got an idea for you and this is what God does in your life he goes I think we can repurpose all these rocks it'll actually hold the house up it'll thanks for watching subscribe not to miss the next videos